In 12 hours, I'm going to be in a national final, which, if you're unaware of the UE Bullets, we are on a three-peat. This is the best team that's ever been in the UK, and uh, I'm happy to be a part of it. And this will be my second championship ring, which got me thinking about what makes like a championship team. And I think the closest comparison to UE, because two of the players that I'm going to talk about also play for uh, UE and Riot Fire, is just the attention to detail when it comes to building teams. And just how much thought and how much preparation goes into every season. And of course, this is the same for every team. But what UE and Ryan Fire do is overdrive. <laughs> They really go after the best in position, and there's nothing other than that with those two teams. And I think that's why today I want to talk about the import tier list and the Ryan Fire. It's also been a very, very long day, hence why we are filming in the dark, and why we have a nice candle, and why the light's a little bit darker than it usually is. But if you are unaware, I'm going to do a little bit of an intro. If you already know the rules of European League of Football, skip ahead. But for those who are unaware, also, my voice is very raspy. I've been talking a lot, doing a lot of work, presenting a lot of my scouting reports and stuff like that. So I'm a little bit, uh, I sound a little bit weird. So apologies for that, but hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. We'll use Hamburg as an example. Esports are reserved for Americans, Japanese, and Canadian players. Esports are used for players outside the country of the team, as well as Australians and New Zealand players. Man and Siesha is a good example of the next rule, which is where you start playing football is the nationality you were assigned in European League of Football. Man and Siesha is Spanish-German, started playing football in Germany, so counts as a German player. These are the 10 import players for the Ryan Fire. If you have spent any time watching European American Football or the ELF, you're going to be aware of quite a few of these already. We're going to start off big, 53 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, over 65% accuracy. Jadrian is one of the smartest people I've ever met when it comes to football knowledge. The way that he breaks things down is incredible. And he is certainly the best goalback in the league at the moment. I don't think it's particularly close. As of now, with that offense and the offensive line and the weapons he has and his ability to hit every spot in the field. He's got a great arm. He's accurate over the top. He hits the middle. He isn't afraid to take risks. He's an all-star. Like, he was the MVP last year. He'd be silly to put him anything else, right? Like, he's way ahead of quite a lot of people. He's got a better coach in South than most of the people. He's got better offensive line than most people. He's got better receivers than most people. And he is a better quarterback than everyone else. So, for me, Jadrian's a pretty obvious lock when it comes to all-star. I cannot see him not being an all-star, you know, unless for injury. So, let's hope that does not happen. We have a Tony Anderson next. I am currently in the process of making a Tony Anderson video. I'm a big, big fan of Tony Anderson. He's going to play a lot of safety and a lot of corner. I think in this system, he's going to be playing a lot more corner than he did at Frankfurt. He went from Tyrrell to Frankfurt. Now he's at the Ryan Fire. And he's huge. 6'4", 210. He affects the run game. Is the big thing that he really does more than most DBs. Massively effective and explosive in a run game. Because of his size, sometimes he can get a little bit maybe outmaneuvered by slot receivers. We saw it with Woody Patterson when they when they matched up against each other. But I would think he would he's a European safety in a European corner could have really performed well. He is one of these two. And I think given the amount of American corners and American safeties, I think that he's most likely to be a starter rather than an all-star. But as far as European safeties go, he's or European DBs in general, he's top two, maybe even one. So, for me, quite an obvious starter. Expect to see a lot of that, because this team is very, very fucking good. We're going to go for Glenn next. Glenn Tonga, the absolute fucking monster that he is behind that line of scrimmage. He is the most physical run. He might not be the fastest running back in the left, but he is absolutely the most physical he is going to run through anyone's fucking face if they're in front of him. Last season, another all-star vote for him. He finished with 7.23 yards of carry and nine touchdowns. He also shored up his fumbles a lot. He had six last year and he only had one in this one. So he's improved that part of his game. And he looks more athletic than he did as well. So, a, a, you know, another all-star vote. He's got a great offensive line in front of him. He's going to be allowed to, to maneuver. He's not much of a receiving threat. I don't think he's the fastest running back. But... The physicality he brings, the ability to just ruin people. <laughs> like, 
his one cut and his spin move. He has a great bag, stiff arm as well. Like he's so physically dominant that it takes a while to bring him down. And for me, another all star. While on the topic for the Brits, I'm gonna go for Max Parkinson next. Another Yui Bullet. In case you're unaware, Jadrian Clark also a Yui Bullet. Max Parkinson was part of the CFL last season with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He is so fast off the burst and he's so big and so physically dominant that he's going to be a big, big part of this defense. I think he is going to fall into starter. I would like to see a bit more bend from him. And because of his inexperience, like he's only had a few seasons to really develop his rush package. He doesn't have as deep of his bag as someone like, like Alessandro Fernandez or Nicolas Gustav or Jan Bombeck. Like he just takes a while to develop, but because it's such a competitive defensive end of rush, All-Star is going to be jam-packed. But for me, fits very clearly into a starter role. He's so... He's like 270, maybe 260. He's big, he's wide. He's going to be able to affect the run if they put him inside as well. So with Tom Sula, who was a former D-line coach, I think he's going to see even more production levels. And then he's already been just gradually spiking in his improvement. I think this year we see another peak for Max Parkinson. Two-time All-Star, Amari Williams returns again. And not just an interception magnet, like the definition of a ball hawk. He's going to be coming back in at safety. You know, he's a two-time first-team <laughs> safety. He just makes crazy plays, has touchdown return potential on every single interception. For me, another all-star player. Like, he's just phenomenal when it comes to these big play plays. Like, he had 253 return yards from interception. So that's probably more than a lot of the league got for rushing yards and uh, receiving yards. So he is, um, for me, another all-star. You know, not really too much of a question and then Darius Nash is going to be joining him I fucking love Darius Nash I think he is awesome he touched the uh the XFL the Vegas Vipers S such an amazing athlete I think that I'm, I'm like I'm not a massive fan of Darius Nash he can play in the nickel or at safety he's aggressive he's physical he can hit really hard his footwork when it comes to in general for pass and run isn't like you know NFL level, but it's a lot higher level than you're going to see when it comes to a lot of these people. And I think Darius Nash is going to fit like sublimely next to Amari Williams. Both of those are going to be all star safeties, I think. Like, they're so, and that like duo, especially with Tony Anderson underneath, I'm so excited to see them. I think that's going to be such like an amazing DB core. Salyu Sal is next, the defensive end from France. I'm again, yeah, I'm a big fan. <laughs> so much Ben, so explosive. Like he's such, like an, a massively explosive defensive end. I'm gonna put him a starter again. Him and Max are gonna be lethal, more of the physical big bruiser type when it comes to defensive end position. And then just the finesse and the athleticism. He's a little leaner. He's you know at 235, so he's a big dude. He's just a little bit like longer. Like, his Ben though is incredible. Some of these plays he's making. Uh, for last season with the Berlin Adler are just immense. He played 12 games for them overall in the season, got five sacks, but it's more just the the raw ability that you can clearly see from him that makes him be like a starter. This defensive end, like I said with the DBs, gonna be so fun to watch with just how teams manage <laughs> both of them at the same time. Arnold Hollierhook is the offensive tackle, also returning to the Ryan Fire really underrated player like he's so good at so many things <laughs> i would like to see a little bit more pop when it comes to engagement on the on the offensive line but overall just a clean solid player his footwork is really really good he can get depth he's fast enough he can pull and he was in an all-star team last season and this is coming into his third year he's very inclined with the system is back with his team that he was with last year and i i again i'm gonna go for him to be an offensive lineman that hits the all-stars you know he, they're just that good <laughs> right far are just that good all their starters by the way because it seems like they're a level below them which they technically are i would not be surprised if each and every one of these also made all-stars like they are that good Sebastian Sagne, he's a Finnish receiver. He's coming over back from Helsinki Wolverines. He spent some time also in the CFL. Very accomplished receiver, 6'2", 200, built well. Can extend the plays with the ball in his hands. Can find open spaces in coverages and obviously has like supreme athleticism. 
He's coming in, he's joining Harlan Kofi, he's joining a receiver we're going to get to in a minute, he's joining Jadrian, he's joining Glenn, he's joining the incredible offensive line. I, I'm going to put him in starter again, another player won't be surprised. The only reason why he's not a level up is because it's wide receiver. There are going to be 16 <laughs> Americans and a few Europeans and with injuries before you get up above 20 Euro Americans and a lot of high-level Europeans as well. So, such an incredibly hard thing to be an all-star in. So, I might see him just outside of it, but Sebastian is an elite European receiver. Kelvin McKnight Jr., the last signing for the Ryan Fire. This one was very much awaited. He's been everywhere in the NFL. We played for the Broncos, the Patriots, the Broncos again, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the CFL, and he went to Seattle Sea Dragons, where he won one of the best returners in the league. The big thing, I think, comes to me with McKnight is that he didn't catch a lot of balls when he was in the XFL. He only caught five. And previous to that in Winnipeg, caught 15. And then in Stanford at his FCS level, he got 100, and 100 catches and 1,400 yards. So he obviously has potential to be a great player in this league. He's slightly smaller, so I'm actually going to play him in the same kind of role they played Patterson and Robitaille the last few years, just in a kind of slot. He is, for me, again, it's kind of this uh, the all-star starter where these could all be all-stars. But with receiver because of the competitiveness. And he's kind of... I'm going to put around here. Wait, I think he's more likely to get all-star than Sebastian. But not these guys. He is an excellent receiver. He's going to be phenomenal for this team. And I think he'll rack up stats for the amount of players he has around him. My criticism... Well, not even really a criticism. It's just there's so many American receivers that are so, so, so good. You've got Matt Holloway, River Roklaw. You've got Malik Stanley as a triple crown winner in Frankfurt. You've got these guys that are going to be taking up the spots, but he will be, and because we have Harlan Kofi and, and Sebastian, and we have Glenn, it's a lot of targets, a lot of people to um, to feed in the offense. Any reason why he's going to be a starter rather than an all-star, but to have five all-stars and five starters is quite insane. Kind of proves how fucking outstanding the Ryan Fire look so far this year. I think people have been... A little bit like, oh, you know, Ryan Fire could lose a game here. Frankfurt and Paris looking real, real good. I think they've got the best import group so far. You know, I've done quite a few of these videos. I've got a playlist that I'll link in the cards in the description. They're phenomenal. The recruitment that they've done over there is excellent. From head coach to, to DC to OC. Now they've got, you know, former John Shoot, the former head coach, the quarterback coach. They've got Tim Beckman, who does an excellent job everywhere. Like... These guys are just putting together a masterclass of recruiting and, and squad building. And honestly, I'm super excited to see how they do this year. It's going to be a phenomenal team. Hope they all gel well together. Let me go, let me know what you guys think. Of course, this is going to be quite a decisive one if we're on fire, quite a controversial team. But I'm going to go win a national championship tomorrow. Uh, that's why my voice has been quite raspy. Lots of talking today, so I apologize. Um, if you enjoyed this one, much appreciated. Thank you very much and goodbye.